for some reason, I'm confounded and heated by his steady gaze. His eyes are alight with some wicked thought. But if you work so hard, what do you do to chill out? Chill out? He smiles, revealing perfect white teeth. I start breathing. He really is beautiful. No one should be this good looking. Well, to chill out, as you put it. I sail. I fly. I indulge in various physical pursuits. He shifts in his chair. I'm a very wealthy man, Miss Dear, and I have expensive and absorbing hobbies. I glance quickly at Kate's questions, wanting to get off this subject. Uh, you invest in manufacturing. Uh, why specifically, I ask? Why does he make me so uncomfortable? I like to build things. I like to know how things work, what makes things tick, how to construct and deconstruct. And I have a love of ships, what can I say? That sounds like your heart talking rather than logic and facts. His mouth quirks up, and he stares appraisingly at me. Possibly, though there are people who'd say, I don't have a heart. Why would they say that? Because they know me well. His lip curls into a wry smile. Uh, would your friends say that you're easy to get to know? And I regret the question as soon as I say it. It's not on Kate's list. Page, turn the page! I'm a very private person, Miss Steele. I go a long way to protect my privacy. I don't often give interviews. Uh, why did you agree to do this one? Because I'm a benefactor of the university, and for all intents and purposes, I couldn't get Miss Cavanaugh off my back. She badgered and badgered my PR people, and I admire that kind of tenacity. <laughs> I know how tenacious Kate can be. That's why I'm sitting here squirming uncomfortably under his penetrating gaze when I should be studying for my exams. You also invest in uh, farming technologies. Why are you so interested in that area? We can't eat money, Miss Steele. And there are too many people on this planet who don't get enough to eat. I concur! That sounds very philanthropic. Is it something you feel passionately about? Feeding the world's poor? He shrugs non- Why am I saying that like he's speaking? He shrugs non-committedly. It's shrewd business, he murmurs. Though I think he's being disingenuous. It doesn't make sense. Feeding the world's poor? I can't see the financial benefit of this. Only the virtue of the ideal. I glance at the next question, confused by his attitude. Do you have a philosophy? If so, what is it? I don't have a philosophy as such. Maybe a guiding principle. Carnegie's. A man who acquires the ability to take full possession of his own mind may take full possession of anything else to which he is justly entitled. I'm very singular, driven. I like control of myself and those around me. So you want to possess things. You are a control freak. I want to deserve to possess them, but yes, bottom line, I do. You sound like the ultimate consumer. I am. He smiles, but the smile doesn't touch his eyes again. This is at odds with someone who wants to feed the world, so I can't help thinking that we're talking about someone else, but I'm mystified as to what it is. I swallow hard. The temperature in the room is rising, or maybe it's just me. I just want this interview to be over. Surely Kate is enough material. Now I glance at the next question. You were adopted. How much do you think that shaped the way you are? Oh, this is personal. I stare at him, hoping he's not offended. His brow furrows. I have no way of knowing. My interest is piqued. How old were you when you were adopted? That's a matter of public record, Miss Steele. His tone is stern. Crap, yes, of course. If I'd known I was doing this interview, I should have done so. I would have done some research. Flustered, I move on quickly. You've had to sacrifice family life for your work. That's not a question. He's terse. Sorry, I squirm. He's made me feel like an errant child. I try again. Uh, have you had to sacrifice family life for your work? I have a family. I have a brother and a sister and two loving parents. I'm not interested in extending my family beyond that. Are you gay, Mr. Gray? He inhales sharply and I cringe. Mortified. Crap! Why didn't I employ some kind of filter before I read this straight out? How can I tell him I'm just reading the questions? Damn Kate, of her curiosity! No, Anastasia, I'm not. He raises his eyebrows and a cool gleam. Sorry, he raises his eyebrows, a cool gleam in his eyes. He does not look pleased. I, I apologize. It's um, it's written here. It's the first time he's said my name. My heartbeat has accelerated. My cheeks are heating up again. Nervously, I tuck my loosened hair behind my ear. 
He cocks his head to one side. These aren't your own questions. The blood drains from my head. Uh, no. Kate, Miss Kavanaugh, uh, sh she compiled the questions. Are you colleagues on the student paper? Oh, no. I hope I have nothing to do with the student paper. It's her extracurricular activity, not mine. My face is aflame. Uh, no, she's my roommate. Oh, this book is riveting. He rubs his chin in quiet deliberation, his gray eyes praising me. Did you volunteer to this interview? He says, his voice deadly quiet. Deadly quiet. Hang on, who's this supposed to be interviewing who? His eyes burn into me and I'm compelled to answer with the truth. I was drafted, she was not well. Uh, my voice is weak and apologetic. That explains a great deal. There's a knock at the door and blonde number two enters. I need to remember what the voice is like. Um... Mr. Cry, forgive me for interrupting, but your next meeting is in two minutes. We're not finished here, Andrea. Please cancel my next meeting. Andrea hesitates, gaping at him. She appears lost. He turns his head slowly to face her and raises his eyebrows. She flushes bright pink. Oh god, it's not just me. Oh good, sorry. It's not just me. Very well, Mr. Gray, she mutters, then exits. He frowns and turns his attention back to me. Where were we, Miss Steele? Oh, we're back to Miss... Oh, sorry, just <laughs> hit the mic. Sorry. Oh, we're back to Miss Steele now. Please, don't let me keep you from anything. I want to know about you. I think that's only fair. His eyes are alight with curiosity. Double crap. Where's he going with this? He places his elbows on the arms of the chair and steeples, 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 I don't know how you pronounce that word, steeples, his fingers in front of his mouth, his mouth is very distracting, I swallow, there's not much to know, what are your plans after you graduate, I shrug, thrown by his interest, move to Seattle with kid, find a job, I haven't really thought beyond my finals, I haven't made any plans, that's great, I just need to get through my final exams, which I should be studying for right now, rather than sitting in your palatial, swanky, sterile office, feeling uncomfortable under your penetrating gaze. Though something tells me it's not the only thing that's going to be penetrating in this book. Eh, 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 eh. We run an excellent internship program here, he says quietly. I raise my eyebrows in surprise. Is he offering me a job? Oh, I'll bear that in mind, I mama. Confounded. Though I'm not sure I'd fit in here. Oh, no, I'm... I'm musing out loud again. Why do you say that? He tilts his head to one side, intrigued. A hint of a smile played on his lips. It's obvious, isn't it? I'm uncoordinated, scruffy, and I'm not blonde! Not to me. His gaze is intense, all humor gone, and strange muscles deep in my belly clench suddenly. I tear my eyes away from scrutiny and stare blindly down at my knotted fingers. What's going on? I have to go. Now! I lean forward to retreat to the corner. Would you like me to show you around, he asks. I'm sure you're far too busy, Mr. Gray, and I do have a long drive. You're driving back to Vancouver. He sounds surprised, anxious even. He glances out of the window. The window. The window. It's begun to rain. Well, you'd better drive carefully. His tone is stern. Authoritative. Why should he care? Did you get any? Did you get everything you need? He, uh, he adds. Yes, sir, I reply, packing the recorder into my backpack. His eyes narrow speculatively. Thank you for the interview, Mr. Gray. The pleasure has been all mine, he says, polite as ever. As her eyes, he stands and holds out his hand. Until we meet again, Miss Steele. And it sounds like a challenge or, or a threat. I'm not sure which. I frown. When will we ever meet again? I, I, I shake his hand once more. It's that the, that odd current between us is still there. It must be in my nerves. Mr. Gray? I nod at him. Moving with leith athletic grace to the door, he opens it wide. Just ensuring you make it through the door, Miss Steele. He gives me a small smile. Obviously, he's referring to my earlier, less than elegant entry into his office. I blush. Uh, that's very considerate, Mr. Gray. I snap, and his smile widens. I'm glad you find me entertaining, I glower inwardly, walking to the fire. I'm surprised when he follows me out. Andrea and Olivia both look up, equally surprised. Did you have a coat? Gray asks. A jacket. 
Olivia leaps up and retrieves my jacket, which Grey takes from her before she can hand it to me. He holds it up and, feeling ridiculously self-conscious, I shrug it on. Grey places his hands for a moment on my shoulders. I, I gasp at the contact. If you notice, this is my reaction. He gives nothing away. His long index finger presses the button, summoning the elevator, and we stand waiting, awkwardly on my part, coolly self-possessed on his. The doors open and I hurry in. Desperate to escape! I really need to get out of here! When I turn to look at him, he's gazing at me and leaning against the doorway beside the elevator with one hand on the wall. He really is very, very good looking. It's unnerving! Anastasia, he says as a farewell, uh, Christian, uh, forward Christian soldiers. <laughs> Christian, I reply. And mercifully, the doors close, and ladies and gentlemen, we've made it through chapter one of Fifty Shades of Grey! I don't know, okay, okay, I don't know which way this book is going to go. So far, it, look, it can be incredibly boring, but I haven't read the entire thing, and it might have potential, but just the first chapter is as fast and exciting to watch as a, a, a gut-shot buffalo dying on its way, trying to reach its wife, okay, it's just, E.L. James, the first chapter sucked, but my... <laughs> Besides that, our Garrett Gamer here, like my videos, comment in my videos, and subscribe. And if you can hear me hitting my own chest, then I'm so very surprised. And why am I still doing it? Stop it. Oh my god, what the hell's going on? They're yeah, kidding, kidding, kidding. I will see you in the next one, guys. And if you haven't watched the, the Political Machine Let's Play with Gaming X249, go watch that. And if you haven't watched my other videos, definitely go watch that. They're awesome and uh, I'll definitely be giving you more Fifty Shades of Grey. I actually want to read this book. I'm just gonna steal it from my colleague. Uh, I'll just leave what's this press? Fifteen dollars? Okay you know he, he can have the book. I'll just steal it from my colleague whenever I'm around. In the meantime guys I'll see you in the next one after this fade out to white. Riveting stuff this.